Dear students, welcome to the world of English language and literature. English is a universal language. It belongs to the Indo-European family of languages. English developed in England and it is used by more than 2 billion people. Early modern English developed in late 15th century with the introduction of printing press to London. Modern English dates back to 17th century with the influence of Great British Empire. The development of printing press and electronic media played a major role in the widespread of English language. Thus English became a global language and an international discourse. Knowing English is like possessing a second soul because it is a language of influence, it is a language of power, it is an instrument of liberation and an instrument of domination. Enrichment of English language led to the enlargement of English literature. English literate text helps students to learn syntax, semantics, discourse patterns, etc. An ideal literate text can stimulate the process of language learning. The only thing we have to do is to tap into the curiosity of students. With this aim, we have started the session Letters Through Literature. It is to groom our students. It is to nourish and polish their literary skills. So today, I am going to introduce the very famous American short story writer William Sidney Porter who is better known by his pen name O. Henry. O. Henry was born in America. He has written more than 380 short stories. His stories are noted for its witticism, wonderful wordplay and surprise twist. He was a great admirer of classical literature and his stories are noted for its wide range of experience. So today I am going to discuss one of his very famous short stories, The Last Leaf. It was published in the year 1907 in his collection, The Trimmed Lamp and Other Stories. So come on, let's have a look into it. This story takes place in Greenwich Village in New York in the early 20th century. It centers on two young women artists, Sue and Jonesy. They shared a small room in an apartment. One day, Jonesy fell ill. She had pneumonia. She was totally dejected and depressed. She lost her interest to survey. The condition of Jonesy pained Sue very much. At the same time, Jonesy developed a strange obsession in her mind. There was an ivy creeper growing outside her window panel. She believed that with the fall of the last leaf of that ivy creeper, she would pass away from this world. This thought strengthened in her mind. This thought deepened in her mind and she was not ready to move on. She was totally depressed and devastated. Sue discussed the problem of Jonesy with her common friend Mr. Bahuman. Mr. Bahuman was an old unsuccessful artist living in that same apartment. And the greatest ambition of Bahuman was to create a masterpiece. Do you know what is a masterpiece? A masterpiece is a supreme work of art just like Da Vinci's Mona Lisa and Pablo Picasso's Guernica. He wished to create such a masterpiece but it remained unfulfilled. So this man, Bahuman, decided to help Jonesy. One day, he, he went out of Jonesy's room. He started to paint the last leaf on her window panel. He painted it in such a manner that it appeared so wonderful, so real and so fresh. On the very next day, Jonesy asked Sue to remove the curtains of her window. To her surprise, she found the last leaf there. She couldn't understand that it was a mere painting. The sight of that last leaf provided a ray of hope in her mind. She decided to withstand life. But at the same time, poor Bowman, who had spent that icy cold night outside painting the last leaf, passed away from pneumonia. There this story ends. When John C. survived, Bahuman departed from this world. Yes, life is like that. It is sometimes strange. It is with full of unexpected twists and turns. So there this story ends. The author conveys two messages through this story. The first one is that we have to carry the yoke of our life. We have to carry the burden of our life. 
there may be so many adversities in our life there may be so many problems so many ups and downs turns and twists that we have to face confidently we have to choose the battle wisely and prudently just like shakespeare tells in macbeth life is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing yes sometimes life signifies nothing but we have to impart a meaning to life we have to find a meaning for our life then it will become worthful otherwise there is no point in quitting like john c the second message conveyed by the author is that our life will become meaningful only when we sacrifice it for the sake of others when we live for others it will become worthful we will remain immortal like bahuman so let me wind up reminding you one thing woods are lovely dark and deep but i have promises to keep and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep so be brave choose your battles wisely thank you so much for watching god bless you